Hello everyone. So we're going to be pushing these videos out a little bit more often just because I know some of y'all has been waiting on it for a while. So uh, we got our farmer dude running around now. So what we'll do now is set up the start of this little grid system. This is a copy I made. I'm going to set it over to the side. All right. So the way we're going to do this is we will set up an interaction folder real quick. This will keep track of our interactive systems, interfaces, actors. So the way we're going to set up our grid is I've seen other videos to where they set it up as a spawnable thing in the world and then that takes too much memory or uh, I guess not too much memory, but we're going to do it a different way. We're just going to attach the grid to our character, essentially. So let's create a blueprint actor. This will be our BP underscore interact checker. And this will be the little square that goes in front of us to check to see if anything's where we're at or where we're going to interact with or till the ground or water a crop or anything like that. So inside of it, I'm going to add a static mesh. And the mesh I'm going to be using is a cube. And it's this cube one. It's not going to... It's popping up on my secondary screen. But the dimensions of it are 100 by 100 by 100 on the approximate size. And just to make sure that it is the right one, if we come out into our project and set our snapping of our grid size to 100, then it's right there. And they're not, <clears throat> they wouldn't be overlapping if you had two. Oh, they just like that. So back in here, we will set the Z scale to 0.1. We're going to set up a glowy material later on, but for now we just need it to actually be in the world. And we're going to set its collision to no collision. Just so we don't end up making our character go flying across the screen, which <laughs> can happen. So let's go into our player blueprint. And the way we're going to do this is on the mesh we'll add a scene component. And this will be our placement... Uh, position I guess whatever you want to call it just basically what's going to be holding on to that interact checker so we will take that I'm gonna move it forward 100 units to start with then we'll go into our event graph and we are going to spawn actor from class this will be our interact checker and the spawn transform will be placement position and we will get the world transform and we'll just pop that right there right click promote that to a variable called interact checker or interact box whatever you want to call it and then we're going to attach actor to component so since this is an actor that we're spawning, but we want to attach it to this placement position that is just a scene component, so we don't want to use attach actor to actor. For the location rule, snap to target. For the rotation rule, keep world. And for the scale rule, snap to target. Now in our placement position, we will need to set the rotation in the details panel. We can set that to world rotation so that it doesn't rotate around as we turn the character. Now in order to move this thing in a more grid-like fashion, we're going to right click and create a custom event called update grid checker. And basically we're just going to be calculating our character's position and then moving it to a certain position based on our world location. So when we get this we will get our actor location. I'm going to move this way up. We're going to need some room. And we will also get our actor forward vector. 
So we're going to take our actor location and we are going to add our forward vector to it. We're going to multiply that. We're going to multiply it by a float. I'm going to default it to 100 for right now and promote it to a variable. This will be our grid size. Doing it this way, we'll be able to adjust that later. So if something takes up more grid space, we'll be able to just feed in a size at the time we're using it. And we will plug this in here. So this will go out 100 units in front of our character and snag the location. Then we need to break that vector because we need the values of it, the X and Y specifically. We are going to divide this by our grid size on the X and the Y. Reason being is because since we're defaulting this to 100, it will, like if you got a thousand and then you divide it by a hundred, it'll go to ten. So it'll move the decimal point and allow us to calculate things more easier. I don't need that description. Then we can round it and that will just get rid of anything past the decimal point. So it'll basically just clean up make the math easier. Then we will multiply this. Control C, Control V. And we'll multiply it also by our grid size. Because all we're doing is trying to smash down any of the numbers off of the, behind the decimal. Then we want to go ahead and tell it, all right, you're actually you know, at this point in the world, but just rounded down. Then we are going to make a new vector using this as the X and that as the Y. The Z will come from our placement position because we want it to, if we do the actor, uh, if we leave it at zero, because we're not doing anything with the zero, it'll just stay on the ground. But we want to get the world location of our placement position. Since it's attached to the character, if our character goes uphill, it'll also follow that. And we'll plug that into our Z. Then we're going to get another copy of our placement position, just so we don't get a bunch of wires crossing over. And we're going to set its world location to that. We'll drag this down. After that, we're going to delay until next tick. And then call this function again so that it's just basically a tick event without being on a tick event. You could do on a delay and just set it real small, like delay 0 0.01 or something, but eh, delay until next tick is fine, I think. Then we will, what was it, update, yeah, update our grid checker. So let's check that out. Interesting. Did I call that? No, I didn't call that. All right, so on our begin play where we're spawning that, let's call that update grid checker function. There we go. So now he's kind of got his own little grid system. And what makes it pretty handy is we can just go in, so we spawn an item into our character's hand that maybe needs a different grid size. So if we just set this, let's say, it could be 250. It's automatically set up to do everything it needs to do. And then that one will take a bigger grid portion. But I'm gonna default this back to 100 because it works well for a, that'd be more like if you're placing a building or 
what have you. But yeah, what we could also do if you don't like how close it is to it, we can add to the grid size right here before we're getting the forward of it. I'm going to say let's go 15 units and we'll promote that to a variable called grid offset or how far basically how far away the um it'll offset from the player so if I come back in here now it's almost unnoticeable the difference that it made but if I set it to 50 <laughs> then it's a bit further ahead of him you can also, if you wanted to, don't know why you would want to, but I think you can probably take this behind him too. Kinda, well. Yeah, it'll go behind him. I don't know why you would want that, but if you want that, why not? I'm just going to set this to about 25 for my grid offset. That seems to look decent. It might throw you off a little bit because uh, thinking of grids, we're used to thinking of the squares inside. But for Unreal Engine, it's actually where the X line and the Y line, where they intersect, that's your grid position. But once we put an actual farm environment behind him, green grass and all that jazz, you won't notice it. It won't be as off-putting. So let's go ahead and add a material for our interact checker. So we'll create a material m underscore interact box. M is for material. We'll double click and open that up and we're going to create a three vector so if you hold three on the keyboard and left click you can get this handy dandy node I'm gonna set it to be a default of a kinda of bluish gonna hold M to get a multiply and then S to get a scalar and this will be glow strength because this is gonna be an emissive color I'm gonna default it to one and we'll plug that in and then we got this nice pretty blue glow. I'm gonna set its roughness to... Yeah, it's fine. If we highlight this box, then we can come over to the shading model and nope, 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 the blend mode. And I'm gonna set it to translucent because I want it to be a little bit see-through. 0.5, two see-through, two see-through, 0.65. Eh, it doesn't matter. You play around with it however you want. We also need to right click this as soon as it's done compiling. And we want to convert this to a parameter. This will be the glow color. Because we're going to use this in a couple different ways. So we'll have it to where it's set up. This box will be used to interact with doors or what have you when we're trying to walk into buildings. We'll also use it if we have a tool out. We can change its glow depending on whether or not we can use that tool on the object that we're currently looking at. And all that jazz. So let's right click and we'll create a material instance. This will be mi underscore interact, uh, I guess just standard. And that will be our standard material right there. So let's jump back in. And now we've got our grid, and it looks not bad. All right, so I will see you all in the next one to start working on the hotbar items, stuff like that. We got a lot we're gonna cover in this one, so I will see you all there. Bye.